it's exciting. But yeah, we 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 UK dinner and you and all of us have nothing to do with it. It's it's a force that's happening independent of what we're doing. But it's all part of the bigger picture. Right. Well, it, apparently, the sun's um, coronal mass ejections are going to start increasing by the end of the year, into 2012. Mm-hmm. They're talking about one that might cripple the Earth permanently. You know, I mean, knocking out power grids and stuff. Well, I've I've heard I've heard from people from all sorts that. The Earth will be destroyed, or the comet will destroy us, or that there's a supernova radiation coming to the Earth that that, that the sun will burn us. I, I say this: at any given, the firstly we are within the sun, so let's get our, our concepts right. The sun, we're viewing the core of the sun. We are in the mid of the sun. We're inside the sun now, so let's get that right. The second is. At any given moment, the sun could consume us and destroy us at any given second. It chooses as a conscious entity not to do that. The sun is wholly aware of us, who and what we are and what we're doing. And under the covenant for the first time in the history of civilization, the first time, anyone has actually done this, there is a formal treaty with the sun. Correct. As there is with the earth, as there is with all the other entities. Right. Can I ask you one more question? Yep. It has to do with chemtrails. I'm sure you're aware of what they're doing. Yep. Do you have any idea why they're doing what they are doing? Yep, uh, it's it's uh, environmental modification. I mean, some say it's poisoning, but then they'd be poisoning themselves. Yes, they're mentally ill. It's it <laughs> is a it is an attempt to modify the environment to maintain above average temperatures uh, to effectively stave off an ice age, which shows that this global warming, even they don't believe it. Mm. I have one theory. Mm-hmm. I think they are putting up a selective filter to filter out the, the sun that that is mending the four DNA strands, so nobody can wake up. Uh, if Maybe. they if they could if they could do that, they would absolutely go go hell for leather. But uh, I'll give you an example of how stupid their best laid plans are. <laughs> People have known for a long, long time that. Uh, that vaccinations contained a lot of bad stuff. And they did. But what they didn't realize is that the, that the human body, I use the word just to, to be able to describe it, that the homo sapien body collects viruses like they collect gold. So what they gave us was A-grade, top-notch viruses. And our body said, thank you. Thank you very much. So when it came down to the swine flu, the bird flu, and any other flu or virus that they tried to lay on us, what they've discovered is that we have a greater tolerance and resistance so that the chance of a global endemic now being unleashed is virtually zero. (laughs) So there's the best laid plans of stupid men in power. Yep. Yep. Well... Go on to the next Thanks, question. Ron. Yep, go. Thank you, Ron. Bye. Bye. All um, right. So sorry, I just a question here, here. I just want to quickly answer if it's okay. Um, from from Linda uh, about the question, what do you mean by going after the bank on conversion? Um, can I just qualify that? Yes. What I was saying is every single remedy I've seen on foreclosure is about reacting once a bank starts an action against you in the court. And every single remedy and relief I've seen is that once it starts, you've missed the golden opportunity. The golden opportunity is the bank has absolutely frauded you. 
They have misrepresented, they have lied, they've cheated, they've stolen. And they've been an absent landlord. I mean, the list of crimes that the bank has done is enormous. But in the court, for better or for worse, and it is a perversion, they say, first in, best dressed. In other words, if you wait for the bank to issue, you've lost at least half of your chance of success by being passive. Now, it's really hard because I'm in the same boat that we, the way that we deal with problems is to draw the curtains and hope they go away. That is human nature, and that's what they play on. But honestly, on the argument of conversion, once you eliminate by revocation of power of attorney, by um, decree of nullity, that proves, by actually doing it, you're proving part of your argument, which is that you did not consent to conversion of the promissory note, that you did not consent to these things because they weren't explained to you. You've already proven half your case by adding those in. You absolutely need to go on the offensive and lodge a statement of claim before the bank issues their foreclosure action. So if you are facing the, the possibility that you can't pay your mortgage and you know you can't pay your mortgage, then you absolutely need to consider that. And then your argument is very, very straightforward. When you lodge a case, a, a, a court case is an account. When you lodge a case, you are the executive of the account. That means you can deposit the amount of money which is outstanding on the interest of the mortgage, which means that you are no longer can be classed as a delinquent tenant. And then you go after the bank for the issue of conversion. And you nail them on that. That's what I meant. Yeah? Yes, that's what I meant by on selling the debt. Yeah. Very good, Frank. All right, Craig has a question here. Um, I'm going to court tomorrow on a writ of restitution after an automatic foreclosure. I got the rights of possession paperwork ready to be recorded with the land titles. Should I also include the power of attorney letter? And with it, um, how do I find two member witnesses? Which I, it, it, maybe you could clarify who the witnesses for the witness document uh, can be. Well, you find out who your witnesses are. But remember one of the things we said about refining yourself in court. Uh, for them, it is one issue, one argument, one case, one process. The, the, the problem is that um, that we are still perfecting the documents so that we're not dealing with one issue, five documents, five processes. So administratively, those documents need to be lodged with the uh, clerk before you go into court. And and the 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 argument ultimately uh, on a foreclosure. I mean, it is hard because we've we've done we put two arguments up, and people have had a mixed bag. I mean, the first argument is is the right of restitution and the fact that the bank is an is an errant landlord, and that you have the right to uh, pay the interest, which is the rent, and bring it up to speed. That seems to be ignored. I mean, most people have have at this point not had any success on that argument. The other argument is to recognise the land as being sacred. Um, this third argument, which is an, an aspect of uh, the revocation of the contract and being on the proactive, has a lot of merit in their system. Has a lot of merit in their system. But arguing from a foreclosure perspective in a hearing, getting your arguments in the right order, uh, is going to be difficult because if you start arguing things like conversion, the judge is simply going to say it's irrelevant. I mean, the issue that you're facing in a foreclosure, and there's so many false trails in a foreclosure, the issue, and I've gone down this so many times now, but the issue is a matter of guardianship of the asset claimed over the minor of the party. That's how it's been dealt with. It's simply contract enforcement. The bank is the guardian. You agreed on the application 
they are now calling in the property. And the debt is merely uh, a proof of argument that you have reneged your obligations in the agreement. So the, the debt is not the central issue. Your agreement is the central issue. So how you argue that uh, in, the, in the court is so many variables. If you could think about a monologue. You could go in there and do the monologue. You could be knocked off the, off the perch. So long as you understand that the bank in the role of guardian because of the application is using their powers to simply say enforce our right to seize the asset. And that's what a guardianship ultimately gives the bank. When you sign the application, you have given the bank a blank check to seize the asset at any argument they wish if they deem that you are no longer meeting the agreement. And of course, the agreement was that you would pay money and that you would pay off a debt. That's what they're doing. So, I mean, good luck. But um, more and more, it's become apparent that the uh, courts and the banks are ignoring any form of argument of tenancy and are just crunching properties, crunching them through, uh, and there's nothing stopping them. So unless you proactively go forward first, um, good luck, but it's going to be a tough one. It'll be a hard one to argue. Good luck to you. Yes, um, and then Frank, could you clarify um, the uh, clarify who the witnesses can be on those witness documents or need to be? They can they can be anybody who's willing to testify that they know you. That's all. They don't need to be members of Acadia. Be right. anyone willing to testify they know you. That's all. I think that was just a misunderstanding of thinking there has to be has to be members of Acadia in your area. And it could be no. anyone that actually can would actually um, be also willing to do an affidavit of truth that they know you and know uh, your character and and uh, everything, so to speak, uh, about you, or, or at right. least for the last few years of what you might have been dealing with, or that you have um, taken care of land or property, so on and so forth. So uh, thank you for helping get that cleared up. So I think. Um, that will help folks be able to move forward quicker on those particular documents. Uh, we have East Pennsylvania on the phone line. Hello. Diego, how are you doing? Doing well. Hi. Good. Um, basically, uh, did you you receive the uh, documents I sent you? On the on the one pound law. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, they they'll be very useful. I mean, yeah, as you yeah. read through. Um, the top part was basically what what they tried to do was because they were handed to to that group, and that's the ones I, I handed to a gentleman up in uh, up in Canada, and he and he wrote rewrote them. You know, he, he didn't rewrite them. What he did was he put them in you know in much more uh, suitable form because before they were just handwritten, and. Um, yes. And and then we went that way. But as far as the chemtrails, what I've learned out of Tenasket, uh, out of Tenasket, um, Washington, was that there's aluminum in these chemtrails. So what they're doing is they're trying to also make our brains in the mush, because that will get in, that will get inside the food chain, and it will slowly but surely do the same thing as as aluminum as uh, um, as uh, Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you know, and cause us, you know, to like, you know, about you know, in a short, short age, go into uh, old, old, old timers quick. Yes. Um, and I, and I actually have, I actually have it. Uh, they sent me a. I was sent a uh, trace of their snow, and inside the snow, that's where I found it. I, I brought it back here for the centrifuge that. And it, it it definitely had a lot of aluminum in it. And I told him, like, you know, for what I had, like, you know, it was like, it was like uh, 40 parts per million, which, you know, doesn't sound like much, but, you know, when you're doing it every day, yeah, it is. So, but um, that that's about it. Um, no, I really appreciate that. And, and look, I, I, I thank you for all that you're doing in awakening um, the original,